So um, the it, uh, and the reason for that is if the true effect is actually large, the truncated trials will lead to minimal overestimates. If the true effect is small, there will be few trials stopped early for benefit, and they will have little weight in the meta-analysis. So if you look at the simulations, everything looks fine if you're just going to do a meta-analysis and include all the trials. You no longer have to worry about the bias of overestimates from the individual trials. However, we have suggested and continue to suggest that it doesn't solve the problem. So, as it turns out, most true treatment effects are modest. Treatment effects that show very large effects are few and far between. Appropriate stopping rules may not be applied. There may be publication bias, such that the negative trials never see the light of day. And if the, tr if the truncated trial in a hypothetical series of trials happens to be one of the early ones, you can have the phenomena where the correcting randomized trials are never done, they are published later, uh, and they may never be done because of what one might call a freezing or stifling effect. You have the big trial, seems to show a benefit, and everybody says it's unethical. As a matter of fact, if the trials that were stopped early did it properly, it should be unethical to do anything else because the rationale for stopping is we now, it's no longer ethical to, uh, to give people the control. And we found this when we tried to do, ultimately successfully, our beta blocker trial, the one with 8,000 patients, we had to overcome the bias in the clinical community of the prior trials, and we almost didn't make it. We had to publish a meta-analysis prior to Christian's definitive one that suggested the answer was not in. So the correcting trial may never have been done. So we have a theoretical, we have two theoretical stances now. One. The simulations show that if you do a proper meta-analysis, the truncated trials do not overestimate. And our position, through the mechanisms that I just said, publication bias, late publication of the correcting trials, correcting trials never done because of a freezing or stifling effect, we still have to worry even with meta-analyses. Is there any empirical evidence that bears on these conflicting positions? Well, um, we asked the question, the meta-analyses with truncated trials suggest large or modest treatment effects. We asked, do meta-analyses suggest that the conditions of overestimation exist? And what we looked at is, if the treatment effects are truly modest, the reason that the truncated trials wouldn't lead to an overestimate is they would have little weight in the meta-analyses. So do they? Do they have little weight in the meta-analyses or more weight than you would expect from the simulations? To answer these questions, we did a systematic review of all the truncated trials we could find that had corresponding meta-analyses, including non-truncated trials addressing the same question. And then we compared the effects in the stopped early trials with the effects in the non-stopped early trials. And these are the results of our 63 or 64 and 63 uh, stopped early trials for which we found corresponding meta-analyses. And I don't expect you to see all those dots and confidence intervals, but what I will tell you is the following. Well, first I'll tell you that the point estimate was a relative risk of a ratio of relative risk of 0.71. In other words, if the effect in the uh, non-truncated trials was 1.0, no difference. The average effect in the truncated trials was a 29% relative risk reduction. If the effect of it was a 20, well, I'll show you. So 63 questions, 91 truncated RCTs, 424 non-truncated RCTs. 
if you looked at the point estimates of the truncated versus the non-truncated, almost all of them favored the truncated, no surprise there. 20 of the 63, there were statistically significant differences. We would say statistically significant overestimates from the truncated trials. If the relative risk of the non-truncated on average would be 0.8, a 20% relative risk reduction, uh, with that 0.71 ratio of relative risk, what you would get with the truncated trials is a 43% relative risk reduction, more than doubling of the truth. 39 of the 63 results in the non-truncated trials failed to show statistical significance, leaving open the possibility that the, trun that the truncated trials not only overestimated, but were creating an effect that wasn't there at all, as you saw in the leukemia example. Um, in 16 of the uh, 63 trials, uh, uh, 16 of the 63, the non-truncated trials showed a relative risk reduction of less than 10% suggesting that the true effect, if it existed, was quite small. The smaller the stopped early trial, the more it overestimates the treatment effect. Where you need to be really worried the small stopped early trials with small number of events. If the relative risk is one, if, if the true relative risk is one, the relative risk in the truncated trials is more than a 50% relative risk reduction. So, key results, most effects small to moderate, large differences in the ratio of effects. We further found that the weight of the truncated trials was large in many cases. The median weight is 28%. So it's not just the small weight in these meta-analyses coming from the truncated trials, it's quite a substantial weight. Interquartile range from 12 to 40%. 43 meta-analyses in which the truncated trials had less than 100 events. These are the ones where you're liable to get the big overestimates when you have small numbers of events. 54% had greater than 20% of the weight in the meta-analyses. So these small truncated trials have a lot of weight. Now, so, the, so here is the argument. The statistician, and Christian was at an exciting debate that we had at the Cochrane collaboration over this, the statisticians say, our models say no problems with stopped early trials when you do a meta-analysis. Put them all together, the other trials will have a correcting effect. We agree. The simulations are right. But we argue the simulations may not represent the real world because of publication bias or this freezing effect of the stopped early trials where the correcting trials are never done. So the question is, does the data from our 63 meta-analyses with truncated and untruncated trials, do they seem to think that the real world operates the way the statistical models do or the way we are suggesting? Well, Let's assume that the true treatment effect is large. If the true treatment effect is large, then you're going to have a lot of stopped early trials, right? Because with a big effect, it's going to quickly get, you're going to get to your threshold, uh, and you're going to have a lot of stopped early trials. And furthermore, the difference between the stopped early and not stopped early will not be so great because the true effect is large. Okay, so what did we find? Um, with a, also, with a lot of truncated trials, its weight in the meta-analyses of the truncated trials would be large. Yes, we found that the weight of the truncated trials was large. But we also found a large difference from the truncated, the, the, the large difference from the truncated to the non-truncated inconsistent. What if you have a true small treatment effect? Well, in the hypothetical model, the, you would have a smaller number of truncated trials and a large difference in the effects uh, uh, and a small weight of the truncated trials. Large difference from the truncated to the non-truncated, 
Yeah, that's what we found. Weight <coughs> of the truncated trials we found was a large weight of the truncated trials, which does not match what you would expect from the theoretical model. What if you have a true small effect with a freezing or stifling effect that we were predicting? Well, if that happened, we should have a large difference from the truncated to the non-truncated. We did. And the weight of the truncated trials will often be large because the correcting trials never get done. That is also what we found. So our results are consistent not with the world operating as the simulations do, but they operate with these problems of possible publication bias, late publication of the non-truncated trials, or the freezing effect in which the non-truncated trials never get published at all. What are the conclusions? Most effects, sadly, of the condition of the drugs and surgical treatments and other therapies that we test are small or moderate. Given that that is the case, the truncated randomized trials will tend to overestimate the treatment effects. When there are a small number of events in the truncated trials, the overestimate will be large. So, clinicians, policymakers, methodologists cannot rely on stopped early trials for effect estimates. And they must be particularly wary, wary because up till today, a huge proportion of these trials are published in JAMA, the Lancet, and the New England Journal of Medicine, because those publications uh, have their, they compete by who can get into the Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, and big treatment effects are exciting to people, and so they get published in top journals. And people tend to believe things published in the top journals, and you have sad stories, as I told you about the beta blockers, which have probably caused hundreds of thousands of strokes worldwide as a result of the early trial. For systematic reviews, if the trials are stopped early, you still have to be alert to the possibility if, if the overview, systematic review, includes a lot of trials or includes any trials stopped early for benefit, you have to at least ask the question, am I getting an overestimate? And substantial overestimates will occur when the following conditions are met. When the transient, when the truncated randomized trial has a small number of events, when there is a big difference, we suggest less than 200, when there is a big difference in the uh, truncated and non-truncated trial, we're suggesting a ratio of relative risk of less than 0.7, and when the, tra the truncated trial has a substantial weight greater than 20%. When these conditions exist, uh, you are in danger of having a meta-analysis overestimate the treatment effects. So substantial dangers and uh, for, from the ethics committee point of view, um, we were uh, in the last um, uh, data monitoring committee, the, ethic, the ethicist was horrified when I suggested we not have a rule for stopping early for benefit. I don't expect to win those battles, but I do expect and succeeded in this case, and what the clinical community should certainly do is have no early looks at the data, only as looking as late as possible when a large number of events have accumulated and you don't have these risks of big overestimates. Thank you very much.